The topic today is ending the cardiovascular epidemic by natural means. I'm fully aware about this title and uh, that it sounds like something that is not possible. But I will take you back 30 years in time and we go through the steps that have occurred in the meantime and maybe we will leave this room with a deeper understanding that this is not far away. Heart disease, cardiovascular disease is the number one cause of death worldwide. One third of all people die from hardening of the arteries. Uh, that is, if it happens in the coronary arteries of the heart, heart attacks, if it happens in the blood vessel walls of the brain, stroke. Despite this epidemic having been around for at least a century in the proportion that we still see it, the research community, the cardiologists in Utrecht, in New York, in Vladivostok, apparently do not care to answer some of the most basic questions. They are many. But the three most important are these ones. Why do we get infarctions of the heart and not of the nose or the elbow or the kneecaps? If cholesterol is high, it is high in the arteries, veins, capillaries, all over the body. A plumber understands this problem. Cardiologists? Don't. Why do we get arteriosclerosis, a hardening of the arteries, but not the veins? Or has anyone heard about venosclerosis? Same thing. Cholesterol levels are the same everywhere. And finally, why do we people die in epidemic proportions from a disease that is essentially unknown in the animal world. None of these questions have been understood nor even addressed by those specialists who pretend to help you prevent this disease. Otherwise I wouldn't need to talk here. You would hear it on the news, you would be treated uh, in the doctor's office, in the hospitals with modern science. And there's a law in medicine that says if a disease continues in epidemic proportions it means that the true nature, the true cause of disease, of this disease has not been understood. Quite logical. If it would be understood one could develop preventive and therapeutic measures that work and the disease would decrease or eventually disappear altogether. I entered this field with this molecule. It changed my path, my career, from becoming a cardiologist myself. Because it suddenly was so interesting that I said, this is more interesting than anything that I ever can do in practicing cardiology anywhere in the world. What is it? You may have heard about cholesterol not being, not swimming in the bloodstream like uh, fat in the soup, but being transported with a spherical, a round particle called LDL, low density lipoprotein, or also called bad cholesterol. For about half a century, the research community has been investigating atherosclerotic plaques in humans after they died. They analyzed what it is. And they said it's cholesterol and it's LDL. So we must fight LDL in the bloodstream in order to prevent atherosclerosis. Well, as you can see nicely from this picture here, apparently they missed something. They missed that LDL by itself is not atherogenic. 
it needs an adhesive tape, a biological adhesive tape called APOA, this uh, band here, around the LDL in order to stick in the blood vessel wall. And then it becomes lipoprotein A. LDL plus APOA means lipoprotein A. When we started our research studies at the University of Hamburg Department of Cardiology analyzing the plaques from human bypass operations, LPA was still the odd thing out. No one thought it has any relevance. Now we are 30 years later and it is clear that lipoprotein little a, LPA, is the leading risk factor for heart attacks, strokes, for restenosis, after bypass surgery, peripheral vascular disease, etc. Even for calcification of the heart valves. <laughs> Good comment. So I got intrigued by this particle. We found it everywhere. We realized the entire research community had missed this, this, this um, adhesive tape and therefore were um, barking up the wrong tree, as they say in English. Now, here comes my contribution in the discovery, and that is I was intrigued to find out why is this dangerous particle only present in humans and for that matter subhuman primates but not in other species? Not in cats, dogs, elephants, camels, anywhere. It kills people? And it, yet it must have had some benefits for humans because otherwise we wouldn't carry it. So, with this discovery, I approached Linus Pauling. And I told him, there's something exciting going on. <coughs> People produce this risk factor, lipoprotein A, in their livers, but they do not produce vitamin C. All other, well, in fact, with very few exceptions, all other species, living beings, have exactly the opposite. They produce vitamin C by converting it from glucose, but they do not produce the LPA. So there was an inverse relationship between these two molecules. Can you follow so far? Yeah. So this was highly exciting, highly interesting. And so, while most of the other researchers I talked to called me crazy with this observation and said, you know, just go home. Linus Pauling was different. He was one of the most uh, remarkable scientists of the last century. And he could think in evolutionary terms. Very few scientists can. And he said, this is not a coincidence what you saw here. This is a law and we want to find out what is behind it. And this is the answer that we came up with. Vitamin C is needed to produce the stability factor called collagen in our body. The most important molecule giving your bones, your skin, your organs stability is collagen. If you are not producing enough of the collagen, you develop a disease called scurvy in English, or scurvoid? <coughs> so, apparently our ancestors lived through times when they were haunted by scurvy. Imagine the ice ages. Many of them died. And only those survived that had a repair factor that could, in case of 
threat of scurvy, threat of blood loss, threat of death from hemorrhagic blood loss, have a repair molecule enter the blood vessel system and try to fix it, try to stop the bleeding. And when this repair overshoots, goes on for too long, then the plaques develop. Animals don't need that repair factor because they are producing enough vitamin C, enough collagen to keep the arteries healthy, stable, unaffected by scurvy. We published several papers, Linus and I, in the 1990s, early 1990s. The title of this publication leaves no doubt what we were convinced we had discovered. It says, solution to the puzzle of human cardiovascular disease. You may think this was a young Dr. Rath who, you know, was bragging about him. No, it was Linus Pauling who said, you need to say what you're convinced of. Or a unified theory of human cardiovascular disease leading the way to the abolition of this disease as a cause of human mortality. Abolition means eradication, elimination. So roughly 30 years ago there were two scientists who con were convinced that one day mankind will rid itself of cardiovascular disease, at least end its form as an epidemic. In one or two generations there will always be some form of cardiovascular problems, but it will not be an epidemic anymore. We found this so important that we issued a call. It's called an international a call for scientific effort to abolish heart disease. And this is the last sentence of this call in Linus's own handwriting. The goal of eliminating heart disease as the major cause of death and disability is now in sight. He died two years after he wrote this. Why did he write, put my name on there? Because he wanted to give me a lot of pleasure. He gave me a torch that put me on a razor blade. For the last two decades, the pharmaceutical industry was fighting me in more than 100 lawsuits just to prevent this from happening. And why am I standing here today? Who was right? Do you think, do you think that someone taking away billions and billions of money, investment money from this interest group walks around free on this planet? Better think twice. Scientific confirmation. It took us 15 years to bring the conclusive evidence. These are genetically modified mice. They have been humanized. They have no ability to produce their own vitamin C unless the wild type mice and they are instead producing human lipoprotein A in their systems. So we can study in this special type of animals the decisive question, what happens if you just leave off vitamin C in the diet of mammals, of any species. Without changing the fat level in the diet, without giving cholesterol, what happens? And here you see what happens. If you give these animals too little vitamin C, these plaques develop. 
just like in the human system at the bifurcation, the, the splitting of the arteries here. This one, this one. If they get enough diet, vitamin C in the diet, the artery walls stay stable. You, here you can see the collagen structures intact mm. and they do not develop any atherosclerosis. And of course we found the lipoprotein A particles <coughs> in these plaques doing exactly what we had predicted. This is the publication if someone wants to read it up, this is uh, the publication year and the journal. In summary, <coughs> we provided scientific evidence that lipoprotein A functions as a mobile emergency molecule trying to repair the scorbutic vascular wall. Is this just theory or does it also work in humans? That we had already answered 20 years ago. This was a clinical study in more than 60 patients. They underwent the most modern form of detecting plaques. And we put them on a vitamin program that we had developed. And one year later, same patient, same heart, same site of the coronary artery, no more deposits. No operation, no bypass surgery, no angioplasty, no balloon catheter. We gave the cells of the artery wall what they needed to heal themselves, repair themselves. So this was the first time in medicine that the natural disappearance of coronary artery plaques had been shown in humans. Did you hear about it on the Telegraph or on the Dutch news? And suddenly, when we understand what I, what I just explained to you, we can answer all those questions that I had uh, shown you in the beginning. We understand why we get infarctions of the heart and not in other organs. Because what sets the heart apart from other organs? It constantly pumps. So the mechanical stress exposes the underlying weakness of the coronary arteries that ride on top of the heart. In other words, they are squeezed flat with every heartbeat. That's why we have repair there. That's why we have clogging there and plaque development. We can understand why we get arteriosclerosis and not venous sclerosis. The blood pressure in the arteries is a hundred times higher than in veins. Which means the, the, they are constantly, when, when they're weak, they're constantly doing this. The cells are giving, creating gaps. And of course we understand also now why animals don't get heart attacks, but people do. Because animals produce enough vitamin C in their diet to keep their arteries stable. I have little time today, so I encourage you, if you are interested to know more, to get the book, Why Animals Don't Get Heart Attacks. There you can read this up and also uh, several other heart disease related studies. I briefly want to touch on the global consequences of this work. Here you see the last conceptual paper about abolishing heart disease, published early 1992. This appeared in April the same year. Time magazine, the real power of vitamins, for the first time in a century, there was a leading magazine, a leading media journal putting positive news about vitamins on the front page. Do you think this was a coincidence? So our publications broke a century of silence about the importance of vitamins. Two years later, a law was signed and passed by US Congress, both houses, Senate and House of Representatives, unanimously. 
that said research in natural health can now be published on products that were tested. Before that, it's a criminal offense. You went to jail for doing that. So with a strike of a pen, a century of the monopoly on health that was created by the pharmaceutical investment business had collapsed. A legal friend of mine said, who knew the uh, Food and Drug Administration attorneys, said this was the biggest defeat for the pharmaceutical industry in its history. What was the consequence of this liberation that suddenly the truth could be stated and said? Well, you see this here. This is the number of publications on the health benefits of vitamins until 2015. It was uh, more than 60,000 and it will soon cross 100,000. That's the consequence. The truth comes out. These are not studies that we published alone. Obviously, these are studies that the world, the community of researchers and scientists published. Oh, one moment. This one here. In parallel, this is the world production of vitamin C in tons. Again, you can see what happened in parallel to this development. People understand, people use worldwide. This is a report that was published in 2017. It investigated the question, how many people in the world suffer from vitamin C deficiency? Again, you can see what happened after this publication. There was a 50% reduction in the people of the world suffering from vitamin C deficiency in two decades following this publication. And you can see that had never happened before. These are the WHO World Health Organization data. These are the countries where there was a decrease in cardiovascular disease in the last two decades. And you can see that about between 40 and 50 percent of the world population benefited from this new understanding. What about the Netherlands? Here the data are even stronger. Two out of three lives that would otherwise have died from cardiovascular disease didn't have to die from this disease. Again, in only two decades. The responsibility continues. This is our research institute in California. From there, we continue to influence natural health globally. Those of you who want to read up the studies, they can do so on the internet, on the website of our research institute, or you go to PubMed and you punch in Dr. Rath and Dr. Netzwicki, and you find more than 100 scientific studies on the health benefits of micronutrients, not just vitamin C, by the way. What about the vitamin companies offering products to Dutch therapists? This is a therapeutic burst here. So when you walk the floor, you will see many booths and they have nice colorful prospectuses and uh, they make a, a compendia and say, oh, you know, we're science based. I'm not aware that any of the, the uh, research, uh, any of the uh, organizations that offer you or the therapists in the Netherlands products 
have their own research institute. Not aware. So, what do they do? Many of them, they hire a librarian, in Dutch it's called a bibliothecarissen, <laughs> and they send them into the library and they say, come back with scientific evidence. And then they put this in a booklet and they give it to you and say, our products are science-based. You have the choice. You have the choice now that you know. You can follow the pioneers. One of them is talking to you right now. Or you can follow the blenders. Thanks for your patience with me. 